Last week we talked about the, the Jesus turning the fish and feeding the 10,000 people. And we're talking about this last week and I got tons of emails. Because I told you, just because you have two fish today, just because you have two fish today and you have uh, five loaves of bread, that doesn't mean that miracle's gonna happen today. And so what we did was we, we uh, talked about this, and I said to the kids, and kids are here today also, this is a great time for you to draw. But today what I want you to draw is something a little different. I don't want you to draw the fish, stuff like this. I want you to draw somebody in your life, somebody in your life who needs the will of God. Okay? So I need you to draw somebody in your life who needs the will of God. So in the last service, I asked for the same thing. I said, you know, for you kids, uh, whoever wants to draw us, draw me a picture of somebody who needed will of God. And one of the fathers, he sent me in this email in between services. And of course, every week, email it to me at info at the And um, we'll, we'll deal with it. We'd love to see it. So adults, here we go. Luke chapter 11, as the kids draw. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have friends and you go to him in midnight and say, friends, lend me three loaves of bread, and a, a, my, a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me, the door is already locked, my children and I are in bed, I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of your friendship, yet... Because of your shameless audacity, I love that word, audacity, oh, which means persistence, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Now, let's just stop here. This is where some preachers who are not biblical stop and say, did you hear what the scripture said? If you keep knocking at the door, and then they twist it. God will give you anything you ask for. So let's all pray right now in the name of Jesus and knock at the door that God will give us a yacht because we have COVID-19 and if we all get a yacht, we can social distance from people. Nobody will come on our yacht. Let's pray this in the name of Jesus. Oh, and if you send me $1,000, that's how they do it. Well, here's the craziest thing. Have you ever said, read on? Because is he talking about God will give you anything if you keep knocking at the door? So then it goes on and it says, so I say to you, Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks will receive. The one who seeks will find. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. So this is where the preacher stops again and says, ask, seek, knock. Come on, let's go for that yacht. Come on, you can go for that knock. All you have to do is ask, seek, and knock. Excuse me, read on. Is he saying that he is going to give you anything that you ask for, anything that you seek for, anything you knock for? No, he's not. Okay, so then you go on and you say, verse 11, which of you fathers, if a son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead, or asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you a yacht? No. He says, how much more will your Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So what Jesus does is this. He takes three teachings and he blends them together. And what we have done in, in the church today, we've taken the three teachings and we've distorted them by only preaching one of them instead of all three together. First of all, he starts off with a friend knocking at a door. And he says, look, if you want to knock at a door, knock at the door. And it will be incredible that your friend will answer because of your audacity. And he will give you what you need. Well, all of a sudden when you walk away, you think, well, if that applies to God, then I can ask for anything. But then he goes on and he says, but now let me tell you another one. Ask 
Seek and knock, and, and the door will be open. Wow, this means I can ask for anything and seek for anything and knock for anything. But then he goes on and he sets you up and he says, now let me tell you about your father, your father in heaven. He wants to give you. And he doesn't say anything or everything. He says the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden you go, what? What he's been saying for the last ask, seek, and knock, for what? The Holy Spirit. And what he's doing is he's going back to his friend. If the friend is asking for bread, the neighbor gives him bread. If you're asking for the Holy Spirit, you will get the Holy Spirit. Now, why is this about how to find God's will? Are you ready? Romans chapter 12. Present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. Notice what it says, a living sacrifice, which means you have to sacrifice to present yourself to God. Are you ready? How? Holy, which only God can give you holiness, but pleasing, which you can do. How do you please God? Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, then it goes on and it says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you get transformed by the renewing of your mind? Are you ready? Pay attention. The Holy Spirit. The only way in God's eyes you can be transformed in your mind so you have the mind of Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Then it goes on, are you ready? How do I find God's will? After you're transformed in the mind, he, Romans 12 says, you will be able to test and approve God's perfect will. Transforming of the mind. The Holy Spirit doesn't want you to be conformed to the patterns world, but he, the Holy Spirit wants you to transform mind. So let's go back. This is Paul saying this in Romans. Let's go back to Jesus. When Jesus is saying the Father wants to give you the Holy Spirit, why does he want to give you the Holy Spirit? Well, when you become a Christian, you have a Holy Spirit in you. When you accept Jesus in your life, you have the Holy Spirit. What he's saying is, I want you to go deeper in the Holy Spirit so you are not led by what you want to do, but you walk in the will of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows the will of the Father, Son. Now, let me show you this because this is so incredible. Kids, keep drawing somebody who needs the will of God. Here's my problem. A lot of people today are trying to find the Holy Spirit and they're not doing it right. The first place to find the Holy Spirit is the Bible. The Bible, the Scripture teach me that all Scripture is inspired. In other words, God breathes Scripture by the Holy Spirit. 99% of my will and God's will in me comes from the Bible. And faith, the Bible says, Romans 10 says that faith comes by hearing the Bible. Remember Romans 12, present yourself as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing. Remember pleasing is through faith. Hebrews 11:6 6, through faith. How do I get faith? The Bible says that when I read the Bible and I study the Bible, because it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, faith of God, not faith of belief, but faith of God swells up inside me. So how do I know God's will? Go to the Bible. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit transform your mind. Let the Holy Spirit lead you biblically. Now, number two, and I'm just going to do a drawing on this one. Time. When, when my wife and I started to date, we went to the pastor because we believe in accountability. 
And we sat down, we said to the pastor, yo, uh, we're dating, we're, we're looking at getting married. And, and, and he says, do you know if it's God's will or not? I said, no, I, no you know, I, I think I do, but I'm not 100%. And he says, let time show you. If I had a couple walk in my office tomorrow and said, hi, we've been dating for five days and we want to get married tomorrow, I would say, good, God bless you, get out of my office. Okay? If, if, if it's God... Time will show you. But the second part about time is timing. Now, maybe it is God's will for you to do this, but it is timing. When does God want you to do this? Illustration. I have a guy come to me and he says, I believe that all children should have a beach party and I say to him, well, that's great. Will you sponsor it? He said, yeah, I'll pay for the beach party. But he says, I want it outside in the church parking lot. And I said, great, when do you want it? In January. But I want all the kids to show up in swimming suits, and they have to play outside in January in the parking lot at the beach party. I would look at him and say, your timing is not God's will. Now, if you want to do it in July when COVID-19 is not around, let's do it. I mean, timing is so important in God's will. And the Holy Spirit will lead you. There's many times, illustration, I, 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 I'm so humbled by this, where the Lord will give me a name and I will phone the person and the person will say, how did you know to phone me? I needed somebody to make that uh, talk to me just now. And I just get off the phone, and I don't say, oh, I'm so excited, and I hang up after I pray with them. And the, but when I hang up, they don't know this. I'm in my office or I'm in my car screaming, thank you, Jesus, keep sending the names. One of our pastors, he phoned a, a guy on one of our lists at 12.30 noon, but the guy was in South Africa, and it's 12.30 night in South Africa. And so our pastor said, well, I'm so sorry I woke you up. It's a 905 phone number. I didn't know you were in South Africa. He says, no, thank you. He says, before I went to bed, I asked God to have somebody talk to me because I'm going through a crisis. See, here's the whole thing. When Jesus says, ask, seek, and knock, what you're doing is you're ask, seek, and knock so that the Holy Spirit will transform your mind so you are not led by yourself, but you are led by the Holy Spirit with timing and with the Bible. Now let me take you, this was a disaster in the last service, but I'll try it better this time. It's a disaster. Peace. <laughs> Philippians 4, 7. Don't laugh at me. You can't do any better, most of you, so don't worry. <laughs> Philippians 4, 7. And the peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 says that Jesus is our peace. Now, now here's the most incredible part about this. Hell can give you a counterfeit peace experience. I've talked to many couples who are dating, they should not get married, and they say to me, oh, I had a peace. And I say, is it from heaven or hell? What do you mean? If it's from heaven, the peace will last. Time will let, let it last. If it's from hell, it will be temporary. See, a lot of people who have infatuation, they have a peace, but because of infatuation, not real love, it just dwindles. And I'm not just talking about dating. The craziest part about this is if I don't have a peace, and even if it looks super, super good, beyond super, super good, it's like, oh! But if I don't have a peace, I don't do it. Now, have I ever lost out because of that? Very few times. Matter of fact, the majority of times, why? Because the fact is this, Philippians 4, 7 says, and the peace of God, which is the Holy Spirit, will guard our hearts and, and, and will be on our own understanding. 
if an evil father knows how to give good gifts, how much more will the Father God give you the Holy Spirit? See, the Holy Spirit doesn't want you to fail. The Holy Spirit wants you to succeed. Now, let me take you to the next one, and this is just so important to me because it just, and you know what? I don't know if I can do this, but I'll try. How about I just do this? I'll just write the first part of the word. Oh, man, I'm not even doing that. Account, ability. If you can't be accountable to spiritual leadership or a godly family, you're probably out of the will of God. I'm not joking. I mean, I, I have people who, uh, you know, they, they do the craziest thing, and, and I say, well, why didn't you come and sit down with us and talk to us and pray? Well, because I knew you would say no. And then all of a sudden they crash, and they look at me like it's my fault. It's like, I, I didn't do that to you. Accountability. Now, I'm not here to tell you what the will of God is, but I'm here to check off all the points. Is this biblical? Is this the right timing in your life? Do you have peace from heaven or do you have peace from hell? Are you running from accountability or are you going towards accountability? And the last one I give to you is this, and this is so important, and I hope I make it right. Boy, I wish I could write. I do use a computer really well, though. Sense. Not human sense, biblical sense. See, to, if praying over two fish and five loaves for 5,000 men and then women, and so that's nuts. That doesn't make sense. But biblical sense doesn't make biblical sense. Now, I'm going to tell you the story. I told a couple of you this a while ago, but I'll tell it to you. Years ago, uh, before I came here, I had a great church up in Jane and Finch here in, in Toronto. Phenomenal church. I loved it. I wanted to stay in that church the rest of my life. I was having so much fun up there. Uh, I mean, the community knew me. I knew the community. It was so much fun. Uh, being in Jane and Finch. I'm in the prayer room at the end of January, and I'm praying in the church up there. I'm praying, God, show me your will, show me your will, thinking about direction for the church, and all of a sudden God speaks to me and says, you'll be leaving this church. And I said to him, yes, in a week from now, I will be leaving. I'm going on a cruise with Shelly. See, Shelly and I saved up all our money to get an inside cabin on a cruise boat. We were going to go on a seven-day cruise, and we were going to drive down there because we couldn't afford to fly, and we were going to just have the time of our lives. And the Lord said to me, no, you'll be leaving this church. You're going to another church. I did something. Dave, you, this is, you, husbands, pay attention. You should never do this. Never drop a news bomb on your wife the first day of holidays, okay? That, I mean, how stupid can I be? I'm driving in the car down I-75. Of course, we're not going to take a hotel. We don't have money. I'm driving as fast as I can down I-75 to get to the cruise. And as we're driving down I-75, Shelly and I are talking, and we're tell, you know, she's telling me about how she loves me, all this. And I look at her and said, by the way, we're leaving the church. She says, I know, we're going on a cruise. I said, no, we're leaving the church. She says, no, we are at that church for the rest of our lives. I don't know why you're saying this. You're wrecking the holiday. For the first two days on the cruise, she was as cold as ice. And I'm looking at all the men, and they're going, yes, I know what that is like. It's cold as ice. She wasn't rude or ignorant, but just, I knew I was stupid in saying that coming down the highway. And then the second night, she comes to me before supper, and she says, can I talk to you? And I think she's going to tell me she's going home. She says, I'm so sorry. The Holy Spirit talked to me this afternoon. We're leaving the church. 
And she says, I'm so sad. And she just broke out crying. This is before we have supper on the cruise boat. She has all her makeup on. It's coming down her face. I mean, she looks terrible. And I hold her in my arms. I said, that's all right. We're in God's will. I know, but can't the Holy Spirit let us stay? We love that church. I said, no, we need to do what the Holy Spirit wants. Did you hear this? Not conform to your own but conform to the Holy Spirit transformed. We get off the boat. My friend who's pastoring in North Miami, Nigel, I go to his place and he says, let's go out for lunch. I said, great. He said, where would you like to go? I said, there's only one restaurant in Florida I love to eat at. I said, can we go to the Cheesecake Factory? Of course, he weighs 380,000 pounds. He says, of course, I love that restaurant. And we go there, and we are eating cheesecake right and left while the ladies are eating their salad. Who eats a salad at the Cheesecake Factory? You eat cheesecake. And, I, and he and I are talking, and he says, so when are you leaving your church? And I looked at him and said, excuse me? He says, there's a beautiful church over here in Florida that's looking for a senior pastor. Can I put your name in, Billy, to be the new senior pastor? I said, of course you can, because it's Florida. I will never see snow. I will never be cold again. It's God's will. I never had to pray about it. Did you hear that line? I never had to pray about it. See, that's where I went wrong. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not my will. See, my will is I never want to see snow again. And I get back to Toronto, and all of a sudden I get a call from a bishop who runs the churches here in Toronto, and he says to me, Billy, Queensway Church, the church on the Queensway, would like you to... Um, put your name in to be their new senior pastor. They'd like to interview you. And I said to him, no, I'm going to Florida. He says, what? I said, there's a church in Florida that wants me, and it's God's will. And he says, how do you know it's God's will? I said, well, there's no snow. It has to be God's will. Jesus never had snow. Why should I? Right? I tried to go biblical. See, you always try to go biblical when you're out of God's will. He says, well, if it's really God's will, then why don't you let Queensway at least talk to you in an interview? And if you see the Holy Spirit, did you hear this? He said to me, if you see the Holy Spirit, you better wake up. That's a terrible line to use. If you see the Holy Spirit, you better wake up. So I, I said to my wife, I said, come on, let's go. Uh, Queensway wants to talk. She says, I don't want to go to Queensway. I want to go to Florida. I said, I do too but let's go to Queensway just so we can write it off. So we go to Queensway, and there's 13 people in this room, and they want to interview us, and we want to talk to them. And, and my friend, one of my friend's phones, five minutes before I get out of the car to go interview at Queensway, and he says, Billy, if you see the Holy Spirit, pay attention. What, do these people write each other's lines? Like, if you, right? And it's like, so I get into the interview and I think to myself, there is no way in a pastoral interview the Holy Spirit's going to show up. And all of a sudden, the chairman of the board says, let's pray. For the next 20 minutes, they were pulling Kleenexes out, crying, wailing unto God. 20, and, and my wife taps me and she says, I think we're seeing the Holy Spirit. I don't think we're going to Florida. And I said, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're not going, we're going to Queensway. And she just started crying like a baby too. And they thought she was being spiritually touched. She wasn't, she was broken. She was going to Florida. <laughs> they thought she was really Holy Ghost touched and she wasn't. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like sour grapes. Can I tell you the rest of the story? I am so thrilled. I am so thrilled I didn't go to Florida. And I did God's will. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. Let the Holy Spirit take care of it. 
Don't be conformed to your brain, but be transformed by the Holy Spirit because if, if an earthly father can give you good gifts, how much more will your heavenly father, when you ask, seek, knock, give you the Holy Spirit? And the more you get the Holy Spirit, the more the Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, direct you. I, I have friends who are huge in corporations downtown. I have friends who are huge in corporations. I mean, big dudes. And they and I, we talk. Do you know, you know what they, their prayer is? Going to work every morning? Holy Spirit, make me better than myself. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom in my business. And, and they'll tell me in businesses, the, the, the Holy Spirit will show them what to do, how to do, that they wouldn't even even thought of. God's will. But here's the question. Is it biblical? Is it timing? It, do you have peace, accountability? And does it make biblical, not human sense, biblical sense?